One of the biggest pieces of advice that I can give anybody out there is to understand the industry and the career that you're looking to go into. I think it's quite easy to get distracted by things online and just see the good in everything. So whether that's a hairdresser or a doctor, you might look online and think, wow, that looks like a great job. But actually being there and a part of it is the true experience of understanding what that industry and job really entails. This is why I am a strong advocate of getting some form of real life work experience. Now, when it comes to dentistry, and of course with medicine, because I know there's a few people out there that watch my videos that are from the med medical side of things, it's ideal to get some form of shadowing. But the problem is people don't really know how to approach this because it's a bit of a wild world. And to be fair, when we look at doctors and dentists, we kind of sit there and think, they're not gonna wanna talk to me, right? They're not going to wanna help me. But the reality is you need the experience because if you don't, you're going into a blind spot You'll have no idea what your true career will look like in the future, and you'll just put yourself at a disadvantage compared to those that do have work experience. So here are my tips on how to find work experience and shadowing opportunities. First thing I would say is to completely rebrand your LinkedIn. LinkedIn seems to be an old person's social networking platform, and to be fair with you, I might not disagree in instances, but use it to your advantage. Everybody who's got a professional outlook to their own image will have some form of LinkedIn. If they care about their brand and they care about their career, they will be on LinkedIn. So make sure you get on there, take your time to go through and outline who you are in a formal yet concise way so that when you can use that as a way to reach out to those people that you want to work with, they can quickly check your profile, understand that you mean business. Even if you don't have any experience, say for example, you're in your GCSE years or your A-level years, and you've got nothing to show for being a dentist or a doctor, you can write within your bio section that I am somebody who's interested in dentistry, I'm studying these GCSEs or these A-levels, my plan is to become a dentist or a doctor, and that in itself is refreshing enough for anybody who receives your messages to say, this person is serious. From that point, once you've updated your LinkedIn, and the profile picture is super important by the way, you need to make sure that you're coming across as professional, but also warm. That will give you the pass almost to start reaching out. Now this part is where it gets a little bit tedious and it does require a lot of patience, but I do this myself. When I get guests on my podcast, for example, I'm not at a stage yet where people are asking me to be on my podcast. I'm still at the stage where I'm asking others if they have the time to commit to my podcast, right? I can't message everybody individually, but what I can do is set my LinkedIn up to look professional enough and then design a template, one that I have for professionals that are already dentists or within dentistry as an industry on a professional level, and one template that I have for students. Whether that's aspiring dentists, or students that might be at university doing dentistry, and I will use each template depending on who I'm speaking to. Then I will try to connect to people, and as I connect to them, I will send them a message. Usually LinkedIn caps the amount of messages that you can send people, and eventually all you can do is just connect to people, right? Go online, go onto LinkedIn and type in whether you're looking for a dentist, type that in, and you'll find loads of dentists. You can narrow it down to area, places of work, etc. Or if you're looking for a doctor in a, in a certain specialty, you can even look for that and try to find those people and connect with them. Now, LinkedIn sometimes pops up the word follow. Don't click follow, right? You need to find the three dots, click on that and connect, because connect is like a friend request almost. You're gonna try to connect to as many people within your area of interest as you can and hope that they connect back. Obviously, this will be the point where they read your profile and say, yeah, this is someone I'm interested in connecting with or not. Once they have connected, then use your template and send them a message that obviously looks quite personal, but outlines your reason for connecting. So in my case, it would be, hey there, doctor, or hey there, whoever I'm speaking to. Thanks for connecting. I am so-and-so, so my name is Naveed. And the reason for me to connect is because I saw your profile, really interested in this, that, and the other. And to be fair, I run a small YouTube channel and a podcast. I think that your experiences would be great to be on the show. It would help a lot of people out there. So if you've got time, let's talk a bit further, try to get some time in the diary and record together. 
That's like an example of how I work. You could do the same thing. My name's so-and-so, I'm really interested in your line of work and I'm aspiring to follow in your footsteps. I would love it if you could spend some time just to discuss things further and maybe we can take things from there. You could shoot this email, this message out through a LinkedIn inbox to as many people with that connect to you as possible. And even if one in 10 of them reply, you've already got a contact in your network within the specialty and in the career that you want, which is great for your future. But also then you can start building a relationship to the point where you can say, if it's possible, I'd love to come in and shadow you for a day or a week or during a summer break, whatever it might be. You can then make those arrangements yourself. That more personal approach is so much better than it is to go to your careers advisor at, you, at uh, school or high school or wherever it might be and try to just get placed somewhere that you may have no contact with anyone. So having the personal approach will allow the person that's mentoring you and you yourself to not only build a good relationship to start with, but also develop it further when you're actually there shadowing them. Put yourself in this position to allow yourself to get a step ahead of everyone around you and to understand your industry better. That way you can ask the right questions and also know whether it's right for you or not. At the same time, you can learn a lot from how these people operate on a day to day, pick up the habits that you think will help you in the future and avoid those that you think will just be a hindrance. This is my advice to everybody out there, whether you're at your GCSE levels or above, or even if you're at university and you just wanna learn more about the industry, to get that hands-on approach, even if it's for half a day. I've shadowed someone for half a day and that was more than enough for me. Anything that you can get, you will only get it by asking in the first place. So put yourself out there, put the graft in on LinkedIn and just make the effort. Sometimes I dedicate half an hour a week only to do this, I still do this, just to get the responses from people and then another half an hour a week just to inbox them and then I take it from there and this is paying dividends now. Grow your network now while you're not a dentist or a doctor and see the benefits of it in a few years time when you're out there in the open and job opportunities are flying at you and you're being referred to because you've got such a big network and that's your career sorted. So start here guys and you will not regret it and I hope this video helped. See you on the next one. Take care. Bye bye.